Hi everyone, a good Tuesday evening to you. It is the first day of meteorological spring, the months of March, April, and May. We are done with meteorological winter, December, January, February. As uh, you probably know, meteorologists, climatologists like to kind of classify these seasons a little bit differently than the traditional astronomical seasons, which have to do with where the Earth is in our orbit around the sun. And those astronomical seasons don't always begin and end at exactly the same time and same date every year. So meteorological seasons make the record keeping a little bit tidier. They always end on the last day of a month and begin on the first day of a month. And here's where we were temperature wise for meteorological winter for the season, about a degree or so warmer than the average. This included a very warm December, one of the warmest on record for our area. And then the pattern flipped very quickly just after New Year's. And we spent most of January in the deep freeze. We ended up at 4.7 degrees cooler than average. It was our coldest January since 2015. Now, February was much closer to the average. And overall, yeah, February was the most kind of benign month temperature wise of the winter season. All right, what about our forecast? Now, as you uh, as you know, we put out our original winter forecast right around early November, as we do every year. It's usually right around Halloween or into that first week of November. We put out an update early in December, and here's a look at that uh, final forecast that uh, was issued in early December. It called for above average temperatures for the season in our area and points to the south and to the uh, southwest as well. And uh, most of the colder than average temperatures were expected to be up in the Pacific Northwest, Northern Rockies as well. That was the forecast. Here's what actually happened. Not a bad forecast. I mean, uh, we had the above average region painted pretty well in our map. Uh, the colder than average region bled a little bit farther to the east than what we had in our forecast. Again, here was the forecast. And so here's what uh, actually happened then. But overall, I'm pretty pleased on a national scale with the overall forecast for the winter season. What about uh, precipitation uh, locally and across the lower 48 states as a uh, as a whole. Precipitation wise, let's uh, take a look at the forecast first, calling for a wetter than average season across a lot of the lower Great Lakes, parts of the Ohio Valley into parts of the uh, northwestern U.S. And here's a look at what happened. The color scale is a little different here, but all this is above average precipitation. Same idea out here. And then all the reds uh, and oranges are uh, below average and browns are below average uh, precipitation. So on a national scale, that was pretty good as well. So I'm pretty pleased with how things uh, looked from a national scale. So how would I grade our winter forecast? I would give the, the call of a wetter than average season an A because that certainly verified. We did call for, even though it was going to be a wetter than average season, we called for below average snow. Now we could also give this forecast, uh, the snow forecast an incomplete because of course we haven't seen our last snowflakes of the season, but so far so good because we are running below average in the snow department, despite how stormy it's been over the last uh, month or six weeks. Now, I give the above average temperature call a B plus. So why is this? Uh, I showed you the maps, you know, on a national scale look pretty good. And locally, we ended up about a degree or so warmer than the average. I give this not an A because while it came out in the wash as kind of what we expected, we had the sequence wrong and quite wrong. Actually, uh, we expected in our original winter forecast for December to be the cold month compared to average and February to be quite a bit warmer than the average. And, you know, we kind of had all the months kind of wrong as far as the intensity of the cold. December ended up being warm. January was our really cold month compared to average. And then February was kind of ho-hum. We kind of thought January would be the kind of ho-hum month back in our original forecast. So what we had the sequence wrong, but it did come out. The three month period uh, ended up being, you know, kind of what we expected. All right, let's look forward to uh, spring and what may influence our weather as we head into the spring season. This complicated chart is a computer model spread for uh, ENSO, or in other words, El Nino La Nina, that region in the Pacific Ocean. And this zero degree centigrade or Celsius line is right here. Everything below that is considered to be La Nina. And of course, we had a La Nina this past winter. It was one of the main drivers of the weather patterns across the Northern Hemisphere in the winter season. Uh, we're expecting to emerge from La Nina, but later in the year, probably into summer, we'll go into neutral. I think we're still gonna be in a La Nina for a lot of the spring season. This is February, March, April, March, April, May, April, May, June. 
That's what all those abbreviations are. So technically probably still in a La Nina through at least the first half of the spring season. Now, La Nina and El Nino don't typically have as big of an influence on northern hemisphere weather patterns in the seasons outside of winter. But early in spring, I think it can still be a pretty big player. Here's a look at, uh, for the spring season, March, April, May, the current computer model blend. And it looks pretty familiar because this is kind of what the models were depicting for the winter season as well. It's pretty classic La Nina stuff. Warmer than average in this zone, colder than average Alaska, Western Canada as well. This is computer model information. It's a model blend of several different long range models. Uh, but, and, and certainly you have to take it with a grain of salt, but it is uh, you know kind of consistent with the overall patterns that have dominated over the last few months. So here's a look at the uh, uh, forecast then, uh, not computer model data, but human forecasted uh, data here uh, showing uh, March, April, May, the temperature outlook. Not going to stray too far from the models here um, because they make sense given the overall pattern drivers, chiefly a decaying but still present La Nina, a warmer than average season favored pretty much everywhere east of the Rockies. Now, some caveats here. This covers a three month period. Of course, there's going to be warm periods, there's going to be cold periods, but when you look at it as a season, as we just did with winter, it probably comes out in the wash as warmer than the average. It also probably comes out as a wetter than average spring season, kind of like winter was. In fact, this map is kind of similar to the overall winter patterns. Dry in the south, wet in the Pacific Northwest, and around the Ohio Valley. Kind of, again, a pretty classic La Nina signature. So, uh, you know, we're not going to slip into any sort of early season drought, it looks like, during spring this year. Of course, our averages rise very quickly in the spring season. By the middle of this month, we're up to 46. By April Fool's Day, our average high is 54. We go all the way up to 75 by the end of May. Those are the current 30-year averages. Of course, we just got a new set of 30-year averages last year. 81 to 2010 uh, was replaced by 1991 to 2020. So in other words, when we talk about average highs, average lows, average precipitation, it's based on a 30-year period. And every 10 years, that 30-year period advances forward a decade. And so now our averages are based on the years 1991 to 2020. Uh, March is actually one of the months that has seen the least amount of warming. It's warmed, but not hugely so. Later in the spring season, especially May, May is much warmer than it used to be in the old 30-year averages. All right, let's head back to the short term. Uh, kind of a, a little bit of a forecast bust today, I would say. Uh, we were expecting a, a chance for a couple of showers pretty late in the day, but it started to rain in some spots as early as the first part of the afternoon, and it's been raining most of the time since. So, uh, you know, definitely kind of an unexpectedly consistent rain with us over the last several hours. That will fade away overnight. Mix of sun and clouds for our Wednesday. Here's the next front late in the day. Again, probably not any sooner than this, but uh, our forecast does include a chance for some showers towards sunset and beyond. Maybe a few wet snowflakes in the mix before the evening is through on our Wednesday. In the wake of that front, the coldest day of the week will be Thursday. Uh, despite a mix of sun and clouds, uh, we'll struggle to get above freezing on Thursday. And a frigid start to Friday down in the teens, but a decent afternoon with temperatures approaching 40 by the end of the afternoon. So we will be dry, it looks like, for most of Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Saturday night and Sunday, shower chances return, perhaps especially early in the day Sunday. The sooner we get the raindrops out of the way Sunday, and if the sun comes out, boy, talk about off to the races temperature-wise. Not in record territory or anything, but we've upped our temperature expectations now for Sunday to 68. Talk about spring fever. We haven't been within a country mile of 68 in a long, long time now. So that's going to be pretty nice. Uh, and again, the trends over the last 24 hours have been to get rid of the showers pretty early Sunday, allowing the sun to come out, allowing us to get firmly in the warm sector and uh, a day to open up the windows perhaps coming up on Sunday. Temperatures will start to glide back into the 40s for highs, which is where we should be at this time of the year, towards the middle of next week. All right, thanks for watching on this long edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. Make it a great rest of your night, and I'll see you right back here on Wednesday.